Yesterday I was working for quite a long time on a presentation and then I realized why am I doing this? I don't want to stand here to entertain you with a nice slideshow with some animations and a, a nice package without really spending too much time on, on the content. So I thought this time I'd do it a little different and only have the naked, bare content and see whatever the package will be. Um, I thought I'd start by just reading out the two pages that I wrote so that everyone is a bit up to date about what my project here at GIMP was and also a little bit how very generally GIMP has been. So here we go. Listen, look, choose and act. My YIP experience started on June the 4th, 2008. When I arrived in front of the culture house on the 24th of August, big expectations and ideas have been building up to the start of the years. The dots of the past seemed to have brought me to that day, and the year would be the year in which I would not set a definite course only, but also execute it as far as possible. The feeling of infinite and limitless possibility in those first weeks still lives vividly in my memory. My mantra of listen, look, choose and act illustrates how much I was on the look for something. On the 4th of September, I wrote in my journal, I'm going to build a house in Sweden. Mm -hmm. By then I had decided, or it was more like a realization, that I would stay on in Italiana after my year had finished. Whether this realization came so strongly because I will eventually build a house here, or because it will lead me to some, uh, something else is something I don't know yet. What I didn't know then and do know now is that the wish to build a house, a wish that had been building up gradually since a year or so, is archetypal for the will to manifest the ego. Some people are dreamers, others are diverse. Entrepreneurs are both. On the 8th of October I wrote, Never before have I dreamt so much about the future, or on second thought I have, but never before have I spent so much thought on actually making it a reality. The trust and confidence people give me here sometimes scares me. And the reason why is reasonably obvious. There is no more being satisfied with dreaming alone. This is the year in which I will find out, find out if I'm only a dreamer or also a doer. This realization to want to build a house came from an open will and an open heart and open mind were results, although unconscious at that point. Later, when I got to know the area better, it resulted in the idea to research and develop a student campus. It combined my deep interest for sustainable architecture, new forms of education, and thus I chose to go into that. I shifted my enthusiasm for the house project to a broader one, and the challenge became that more complex. The enthusiasm and commitment that, that I felt in the first couple of months kept us at all this year. And yesterday, and the days before, when I was thinking about the actual physical manifestation of something or whatever, or of a project, I haven't that made that much project uh, pro progress. All I did was collecting some writing, um, working on the conference a bit, and dreaming a lot still. And that's, yeah, of course, before YIP, that's boom, that would have been the end. I haven't manifested anything physical, I haven't made progress, same thing all over again. But I think it, uh, it's possible to look a bit beyond that, because the question that you can ask is how do you measure progress? And that's why I pulled this thing out, because I thought it might give it, uh, make it a bit more clear. You can look at it like this, and this is what my default is. This is what I, how I thought about progress before I came here. So linear progress, you have a beginning, you have an end, and then you can measure it by going like that. But of course, through, throughout the year, one of the main things that came up was this guy here. And you can measure progress like this. Where this is uh, the eye, inner world and the world. To explain very shortly, um, this is your inner development. So it means that you pose a question or you come to something in your life that you are unsatisfied with. You work with that and then you manifest it in the outside world. Now the way that I think my landscape looks like now is a little bit like this. So it's not very much in balance. <laughs> this being more the inner side and this being what I have physically manifested. And a third way that you can look at progress is um, 
like this. So this is an axis. Starts here. And this is actually what I see as my own version of what progress is. And here you can, you can look at this like this. These are all themes that come back because sometimes I have the feeling I'm going in circles. I am always thinking, ah, oh, finally, now I've made some progress and now finally I've come to an understanding of something. But then a year later I find that I'm in the exact same position. Or not. It's the same theme, but it comes back in a more intense way. So maybe this is progress. And of course, the thing that this is, this, um, the result of this, and also this one, compared to this one, which I had before you, was that there's no beginning and ending. There's just mm -hmm. an infinite spiral on both sides. Mm -hmm. And this one is a really nice one because it includes both the inner and, our, and the outer world. So that's a little bit about um, progress, how I deal with, with progress. And uh, you, see, you maybe saw it very shortly in the profile that I did with Lauren was myself, but I was in the background, there was a whole bunch of other people and a whole bunch of other theories and in the shadow I'm working on a text so that I can put that text in and text is about how much of what I am is actually me and how much is being is a, um, a combination of everything that I went through in my education so it's this very archetypal nature-nurture debate how much is from your education, how much comes from your genes but the interesting thought there, I think, is again that the third thing is not implemented in that. And that is that uh, beyond nature and nurture there is a third one and that is crea creating out of nothing. So actually the original thought. And it's very difficult for me to see what I create myself, what comes as a combination of other theories, and how important that is. Um, if you put it in the framework of, I don't know if I have it here, me and the world, no I don't, but anyway, <clears throat> if you look at it in a way that um, if I stand as an individual in the world, but you look at it in a non-dualistic way, what we, uh, the thing we talked about with Nicanor, then it doesn't even matter so much what comes from myself and what comes from someone else, and I work with that, and then there is a joint progress or a, a joint exploration of what can happen together. So then this question of ego doesn't matter so much, but still it keeps popping up when I'm feeling not so good, then I'm like, oh darn, you know, my name doesn't appear anywhere in the books of history or whatever. And so this is a pattern that comes back um, regularly. Truthfulness, archetype perfection, search for something lasting in a rapidly changing world. Yeah, another one, often when I'm writing or when I'm thinking about a project I get stuck because I question, is this truthful? And it's a very vague word somehow. But for example, this presentation it gave me such a hard time trying to figure out what I actually want to say because, in my opinion there is only one archetype of the presentation of what this year has been for me. And everything else is imperfection. And how do I grasp that archetype and put it down and present it to you? That's why yesterday I was... I, I started over ten times. I have a great idea, nice graphics. Um, I saw the whole structure of it. This will... okay, I have to use this one because it will be more clear. No, it's not good. It's not the archetype. It's not the archetype. And then in the end, of course, this is also a bit what I was talking about when I came back from, um, from the internships. Like, if it's not the archetype, then I'd rather not do it. But that's something that I also try to, to overcome a little bit, because coming back to this, this is probably the explanation why it looks like this. Does that make sense? I really, this is something that I really want to explain. The reason that this one here is so small and this one here is so big is from the moment that I want to put something that comes out of myself into the world, it's no longer the archetype. It's like the, I don't know who said it, but anyway, the music that I heard in my head was always so much more beautiful than the music that I wrote down on paper. And that's something that I just have to get rid of and just do stuff. Hmm.